Good afternoon, everyone. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be here. Hey, coming after Joram, I'm in trouble. Joram Winamo, such wise nuggets, right? I was busy scribbling away because there's still so much to learn. I'm an entrepreneur, and even if I am still employed, I am still an entrepreneur. So I think I should just give you a little bit of background about me. Um, so I began working in the financial services space 20 years ago. And I began with a lot of excitement because I came from a different industry. I studied finance and marketing in school, but started in marketing, specifically in an e-commerce space. And then when I worked for a certain client, I realized I'm so passionate about financial literacy, not financial literacy, but financial services, and decided to come and uh, join a financial services firm. FIDA Investment Bank was actually founded by my father. And when I told him what I wanted to do, because in between the two jobs, I was busy on stage with people like Mugambi, um, my dad and mom got worried. And so they said to me, look, this, this thing of you just uh, doing Matembezi, which was a show we had started with a friend of mine, and acting was getting them a little, a little worried. And so they said, look, come join me. My dad said, come join me, let's build this company. And so we began. But as we started, um, at that time, the company was FIDA Securities, and we sold, we were a stockbroking firm licensed by FIDA, by uh, the Capital Markets Authority. And we'd get all these customers coming through, um, and I'd sit with them and listen and hear, and I'd always ask questions, what do you want to do? And then after you sell, what's your plan, what's your goal? And so we'd get really deep into their, their goals and, and, and so on and so forth. And I started to realize that a lot of people didn't know why they were investing. For what purpose? It was just, you know, my sister told me, Mumias is going to go places. Uh, today, Mumias, as you know, is not listed anymore. But, you know, as well as a few other companies, and some of us are jaded, either ourselves or because of our parents' experiences from some of the decisions that we've made on the stock market. Um, but, you know, just realizing that a lot of people make investment decisions based on what others are doing and not because they understand even themselves. And when we look at our investments, we don't look at it as a whole portfolio. It's just, oh, today I have, I have some money. Let me, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And then Jane tells me she's buying a plot somewhere and we, oh, Jane, oh, good return? Fantastic, let me invest. And so I'm here today to kind of just help paint a picture around what should you be thinking about before you begin to invest? Let me just see in the room, um, just who's here. First of all, anybody in their 20s? Let me just see. 20s? OK, a good number. 30s? Wow, the majority. 40s? OK. Uh, 50s? Anybody in their 50s? Awesome. 60s? Anyone 60 and over? Nobody. Oh, we do have someone. Oh, you do not look like you're 60 at all. Um, so fantastic. So I'll try and be relevant as I go. Um, so please put up my slides and I can start with my presentation. So FIDA has been around for the last 30 years. And as I said, we started off as a stockbroking firm, transitioned into an investment bank. And in the business, I run operations. I'm the KYM. I know everything about anything, um, including where things are delivered, but also you know, all the clients that we have. We manage um, a lot of uh, our clients' money in the hundreds and hundreds of millions. That is not ours, but our clients' money. And so we do stockbroking, investment banking, um, we help companies raise capital, we advise on mergers and acquisitions. Actually, the current hot one, which you'll see in the newspaper, we are involved. Bamburi is one of my clients, not Bamburi, but one of the, one of the guys who are taking over the, or trying to take over Bamburi. So my, my job is very exciting, but also very stressful. Anyway, so investing, where do I begin? The first thing is that investing is about you. It's not about what everyone else is doing, it's about you. And a lot of times we don't think about it that way. We think that you know, this is what I should be doing, this is what everyone is doing, but it's about you because it depends on your personal circumstances. The reason someone will decide to buy land in Karen um, it's very different from why you decide to buy land in Karen or not buy land in Karen or wherever that is. Investing is about you. Uh, and so keep that pin, let's put a pin on that. I want to share two different stories. The first one, that both people I know, um, the first one is a real person, that picture. Her name is Rose. Some of you may know her. Anyone know Rose Moyu? No one, okay. 
Yeah, so Rose, um, I've, I knew Rose, I met her many, many, many years ago. Rose um, runs a children's home and her salary from being employed and being in her business has never been more than 45,000 shillings. And so immediately you see that your mind goes somewhere, right? She must be struggling, you know? Oh, Rose. And then you see Sam. <laughs> and then you see Sam. So Sam is actually a woman who I cannot share who she is because, you know, it's, it's private and confidential. But let's call him her Sam. And Sam is a development professional, a Kenyan who is very successful, actually leading a very, very big organization um, um, in, in a, well, she doesn't lead the organization, he doesn't lead the organization, but is in a senior role in that organization, and earns 1.5 million shillings a month. And you're like, wow, I want to be, right? I want to be Sam. I'm just like, this is so awesome. So let's just look a little bit um, closely at them. So Rose was born in Kenya, raised in Kenya, um, but when she was 12 years old, tragedy hit her home. Her husband, I mean, her dad who worked in Zambia at the time got into a very serious accident and became paralyzed. And as a result of that, their life completely changed. And so she spent a lot of time with their grandmother. And her grandmother lived in Korogosho. And every time she went to her grandmother's house, her grandma always had people coming in and she didn't understand what it was about. But as she grew older, she learned that these were guys who were coming to pay her grandma rent. And all the time her grandma would tell her, when you get money, make sure you buy a plot. And so she's like, okay, I will, I will. And she did well in school. Her uncles would give her 1,000 as a gift, 500, and she put money together. When she turned 18, she did buy her first plot and she continued buying plots thereafter. She got a good sponsorship, went abroad to Germany to study, came back home. She's been very, very passionate about uh, children who are orphaned. And so she helps to finance uh, their education, and so she set up a children's home for that purpose. And through that time, she's never honestly earned more than 45,000 shillings, but she's a dollar millionaire today. And her lifestyle is financed by her investments. How? Consistently putting money away. That 2,000, 1,500, she started with buying plots 50 by 50, small to things that are like 20,000. And then also, she's very, very aggressive around negotiating and finding opportunities and also trying to see okay, that, that, that opportunity is a million shillings. I don't have a million shillings. So she sits with the guys who are selling the opportunity and she's like, can I pay you 20,000 a month? something that you'd be typically afraid to do because you're just like, how do I even approach them? But Rose doesn't feel ashamed. She's just like, I want to be able to afford this thing, so help me. And she's gotten favor through that. Now let's look at Sam.